My name is Deborah Lane. I'm the town clerk. It's my pleasure to convene the meeting this evening until a new council chair for 2013 is elected. It is Monday, December 10th, 2012 at 7 o'clock p.m. The first order of business will be to administer the oaths of office. We're first of all going to start with the town council. In just a minute, I'm going to invite down Ms. Sullivan, Mr. Wagner, and Mr. Walsh. And following that, we will have the oath of office for the Cape Elizabeth School Board. And I'll be inviting uh, to join me in just a minute Mr. Christie, Mr. Hillman, and Ms. Williams Hewitt. So we'll begin with uh, the town council votes. Why don't you just do those two and then we can take a break from it. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all. It is now in order for the roll call. Councilor Guvenelli? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. Councilor Sherman? Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Wagner? Here. And Councilor Walsh? Here. I'd like to now move on to item number one, which is election of a town council chair for council year 2013. Do I hear a motion? I move that we nominate James Walsh as chairman of the town council. Second. Moved by Councillor Sullivan, seconded by Councillor Wagner. Are there any other nominations? Nominations are ceased, and I call for the vote. All those in favor to elect Councillor Walsh for the council year 2013 as the Cape Elizabeth Town Council chairman. That motion carries, six yay. Thank you. 
Thank you, and I think Deb's glad that uh, she can move the meeting over to someone else. <laughs> well, um, we'll start off with a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, if you'd all join me. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, now that we have that out of the way, I thank everyone for your confidence and I look forward to a productive year for the Town Council and for the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the next item on our agenda is Town Council reports and correspondence. Yes, thank you. Yes. Are you Chairman Walsh, Chair Walsh? Jim. <laughs> Well, Jim, just a couple of things. Uh, although the library bond failed, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the, uh, the uh, devoted efforts of the, chair, of the uh, Thomas More Library Board of Trustees. They were charged by the town <coughs> with public outreach and education, and they, they worked very hard for over a year, had multiple tours, tease opportunities, as well as creating a brochure, and so I'd like to, to acknowledge that, that effort. And one more thing, uh, I am uh, coming off of the uh, Conservation Commission as liaison after three years, and I just want to say what an absolute privilege it has been to work with the Conservation Commission, an outstanding group of volunteers who have, are so devoted to our town and its trails and our open space, and I wish Councillor Wagner, who will be now the new liaison to the Conservation Commission, that he had the tremendous experience that I had. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports or correspondence from any other council member? Okay, moving on to the next item on our agenda, which is a citizen's opportunity for a discussion of items that are not on today's agenda. Do we have any citizens who wish to address the council? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the town manager's report. Yes, thank you, Jim. Just wanted to briefly mention that uh, it's available on the town website a report on uh, the program to maintain the different Greenbelt trails this summer. Uh, Brendan Sweeney, who worked again for a second year with Public Works uh, over the warmer months, uh, spent about half his time working on, on the trails. And for the citizens who go look at these trails, uh, there's really a big difference from the maintenance two years ago. Uh, that came about as a result of the council two years ago, uh, voting some extra funds to <coughs> ensure that there's, there's a regular effort to maintain the trail. So I want to thank Bob Malley for his report. I want to thank Brendan uh, for his report as well and for all the good work on so many trails. And uh, this is a, a great time for the citizens to enjoy these trails before they get slippery and while the uh, regular types of bugs are no longer there. So uh, really encourage uh, folks to get out and to, to see the green belt and uh, see all the, the beautiful open space and trails that we do have. So, thank you. Is this Brendan's second year or third year? Second year. Second year doing that. Great. Well, we had uh, lots of good work the first year and that's, uh, that's great. Thank you very much. Any, anything else? No, thank okay. you. Okay. All right, we can uh, move on to item uh, draft town council minutes of November 14, 2012. Are there any um, additions or corrections to the minutes that have been presented to us in our packets? Hearing or seeing no, none, I will entertain a motion to accept. Seconded? I'll second. All those in favor? Passes unanimously. We move on to item number two, which is uh, the proposed town council rules for 2013. Uh, which are included in your packet. Uh, there are no changes to those, Michael, am I correct? None that I've heard proposed. Nothing proposed. Last year we did change the start time for our council meeting and I believe that we've all been pretty satisfied with starting at seven o'clock. So I would entertain a motion to accept the proposed town council rules for 2013. Seconded. I'll second. Jessica. All those in favor of pr the proposed town council rules in our packet. Unanimous. Item number three, appointment of the Finance Committee Chair. Do I hear a nomination? 
Jessica? I move that we appoint uh, Councillor Frank Evernelli as chairman. Second. It's first and seconded. Um, are there any other nominations? Seeing no other nominations, let's hear a vote. All those in favor, unanimous. Congratulations, Frank, on the second year. Okay, we have, uh, I thought I saw our, our school board she elect. She just went by. She just went by, okay. I thought she was coming to be sworn in, but I guess not. Okay, do they have a, um, well, they have a caucus next door, so I think that her, uh, her uh, colleagues will send her back out here. Okay, item number four, the appointment of an ordinance committee chair. And you hear a nomination from, yes, Frank? Seconded. I second. Do we have to take this as a block the entire committee, Michael? It's it's easier to do that. It is okay. So Frank, if you could I nominate as chair Kathy Ray and as uh, members of the committee uh, Dave Sherman and Justice Oliver. And seconded. Second. Jessica. All those in favor? Unanimous. Item number five: the appointment of the appointments committee. I hear a nomination. The appointments committee. Frank, you're doing the heavy lifting down there. <laughs> uh, nominate uh, Jessica Sullivan as chair of the appointments committee, and Frank Evanelli and Caitlin Jordan and Jamie Wagner as members of the. I hear a second. Second, and Jamie Wagner. All those in favor of the appointments committee, as stated. Animus. Thank you. Okay, you're here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, do I? I don't need a motion to uh, to change the order no, of our just agenda. Just Deb, you'd step forward. Okay, well now we, we move to uh, items 6 through 15. Um, I will entertain a single motion to approve items 6 through 15 uh, with the notation that any counselor may request that any item to be removed from this list and vote it on separately if you so desire. Do I have a motion to take items 6 through 15 as a block? Jessica? I move that we take items 6 through 15 uh, on block. Seconded? Second. Frank Covinelli. All those in favor of the uh, consent agenda, items 6 through 15? All those in favor, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item 16. Um, the personnel code proposed amendment, and um, it's for a public hearing. So we open up a public hearing this evening. Anyone from the public who wishes to address the personnel code that is proposed in today's agenda? I don't see anyone, so I will close the public hearing and move to item 16, which is the actual amendment. Uh, do I hear a motion to, uh, to move the personnel code proposed amendment that's in before us? Jessica? I move that we uh, approve the personnel, the personnel code propo as proposed. Seconded. Second. Frank. All those in favor of the personal code proposed amendment? Unanimous. Okay, moving on to 
a public hearing for the general assistance annual update. Look to the citizens. Is there anyone who wishes to come forward to address us relative to the general assistance update? Seeing no one, I'll close that public hearing and move to item 17, which is to accept the annual update of the general assistance appendices, which are in your packet today. Entertain a motion. Move to approve uh, item number 17. Okay. Seconded? I second. Seconded. All those in favor of item 17, annual update of the general assistance appendices? Accepted unanimously. Number 18, the Perputa Club annual beverage license. Uh, we have uh, the manager of the facility here who ran a very lovely Christmas evening the other night. Thank you. Uh, would you like to address us about this uh, application? You're welcome. Thank you for your consideration and allowed us to use our very first beverage license agreement. This is second choice to the beverage. Little history there. Good. Okay. Do I hear a motion to um, approve the Perputa Club's annual beverage license? Kathy? I move that we approve the Perputa Club's annual beverage licenses. Second it. I'll second. Yes, Jessica. All, okay, then hi. All those in favor of approving the Pabuda Club annual license? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Number 19, the annual acceptance of gifts to the town. Um, I hear a motion to accept the uh, annual or acceptance of gifts to this town. Jamie. Uh, I move to accept the annual acceptance acceptance of gifts to the town. Good. And again, um, these are ordered the town council accept the gifts with gratitude um, given to the town of council during a town of Cape Elizabeth during the year of 2012. So again, we accept these with gratitude. So seconded. Was that seconded by anyone? Yeah. Jessica. All those in favor of accepting these gifts to the town? Unanimous. Next item on our agenda is number 20, Boundary Surveys Report from the Ordinance Committee. Uh, we have a motion in front of us with a recommendation from the Ordinance Committee to move it to a public hearing. I have a motion. Frank? Uh, move that the, um, <coughs> the uh, recommendation from the Ordinance Committee for the Boundary Survey Report to go to public hearing. Seconded, anyone? Jessica? I'll second that. All those in favor of uh, setting a public hearing on January 7, 2013 at 7 p.m. for the Brownie Survey Report from the Ordinance Committee? It's unanimous. Number 21, uh, proposed amendments to the sign ordinance. Um, again, we have a report from the town, the Ordinance Committee to set a public hearing on January 7th. Do I hear a motion? Jessica? I move that we uh, uh, approve <clears throat> the proposed amendments to the sign ordinance. We move it forward to a, a public hearing. Okay, okay so it's to a hearing, not to accept yeah. it at this right. point. Right. Okay. Um, Second. Seconded by Caitlin. Thank you. All those in favor of, of uh, proposed amendments to the sign ordinance and setting a public hearing on January 7th. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to number, item number 22, the miscellaneous. Um, yes. Let's go to the microphone. Well, um, it is. Um, it was a recommendation from the ordinance committee back to the town council. I'm sorry if you f if you feel that way. You're certainly welcome. I think, with the indulgence of the council, to speak with us if you wish. Um, it will be set for another public hearing on the 7th, however, so please speak to us if you wish, both of you, um, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Chris Bond, Great, and I live at 13 Ocean House Road in Cape Elizabeth, and uh, I just got this letter in the mail, as this gentleman did, uh, saying that there was a proposal to allow uh, business signs that were in residential neighborhoods 
to be the size of business signs in commercial districts. And I don't know much about signs, but I know that there's some pretty big signs in the commercial district. If you look at the IGA sign, I happen to live next door to a business that's near and dear to my heart. Linda and I started the Veterinary Center back in 1983, and as you may know, there's a little sign out in front. <clears throat> and we came to Cape Elizabeth because uh, we wanted to serve the town of Cape Elizabeth primarily. And because we're in a, in a residential area, even though we are on 77, we wanted to maintain a residential look to the property and a residential feel to the property. And uh, we always felt that the sign was more than adequate because most people knew where we were. And particularly nowadays, if you don't know where some place is, you just have to Google it or put it in your GPS and it's going to bring you right there. So signs for residential locations, in my mind, that are meant to essentially serve an advertising function are well placed in a business location but not well placed in a, uh, in a residential location and that signs in residential locations should be kept to a size that is, serves the location function. You know, you're driving by, you're already looking for it. Oh, there it is, there's the sign. Uh, as opposed to, I'm just driving down the street, not even thinking about a pair of shoes, and oh, there's a shoe store sign. You know, gee, I think I'll pull, I'll pull in. So uh, in keeping with the residential nature of Cape Elizabeth, particularly with respect to businesses that are in a residential area and are serving the residences of that area, I think it's entirely appropriate to have a business sign, but that that sign be kept at a size and, and, and a visual impact that is, is just to locate, not to advertise. Thank you. I thank appreciate you. your indulgence, and congratulations to all of you who are elected, and thank you all for your service to the town. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Sir, did you wish to address us since you received that same letter? And, yes. and I couldn't say it much better than uh, it was just... Your, na your name, sir? Oh, and your, ben Morrill. And your address? 981 Shore Road. Okay, thank you. Um, I couldn't have said it much better, and my... Uh, when I got the letter, it was more to do with the ball, the ball field across from the park. Um, but I think we need to take into consideration that Cape Elizabeth is a very unique town and the fact that it hasn't been over-commercialized. And we need, to, uh, we need to be mindful and don't go down a slippery slope where maybe just signs at a baseball field, but Mm -hmm. Where does that end up? Does it end up in uh, billboards or allowing big retailers to come into Cape Elizabeth? I think a lot of people that live in Cape Elizabeth came here or you know, they grew up here, they moved here as, as my wife and I did because of that charm and the unique mm -hmm. uh, town that it is. And it's not over commercialized. So, um, so I just wanted to express those thoughts and, and have that taken into consideration. Okay, well, thank you. Just for clarity for those at home that are watching this, um, uh, the Ordinance Committee basically um, recommended a, a minor adjustment modification to the sign at the veterinary service. And in a request from um, the Little League was to allow for temporary signs at, at Playstead Park on the, out, on the outfield fence, similar to what's being done for the, well, I think probably for, I don't know how many years, I think eight or nine years at Lions Field. So that's what's on the table. Um, so again, we appreciate, sorry that for the confusion that you had a chance to speak tonight, but we are going to have another public hearing on the 7th. Um, and certainly, I think staff would be more than happy to discuss with both you gentlemen exactly what is on the table for, for as a proposal. There were two ordinance committee meetings leading up to this recommendation. So, any comments? Yeah, just the clarity. Uh, so, the proposed <coughs> change would only permit larger signs at at uh, Playstead or Lions, whatever. Well, no, no it it no. these would be um, temporary signs on the outfield, and they would only be used for the season, which is a relatively short season, from May to June. And they are similar to what's at Lions. Lions puts them up for the period that they're out there playing, and then they come down. Uh, but so they are. 
So temporary. commercial establishments wouldn't be able to do it? Um, no, they would have to go through the fundraising mechanism that's in place with the Little League. Yeah, just so go ahead. Just to be clear, there's two separate amendments to the signed ordinance that each individual spoke on. Uh, one only relates to uh, temporary si advertising signs at Lions Field Complex and school athletic grounds. Right now, uh, they allow at <clears throat> Lions Field and on the school grounds the signs that go on the, the fences during the season that, that they use as fundraisers for their particular activities. Mm -hmm. uh, Plaisted Park, which is across from Fort Williams, was not included as part of that when it was first adopted in 1997 for Lions Field in 2005 for the school grounds. There's now a proposal to extend that to Place to Park as well yeah. that came from Little League with the hope that Little League could raise more money mm -hmm. by selling that advertising. The, the one that Mr. Bond <coughs> spoke about is an amendment. Uh, in, <coughs> on Route 77, we have some non-residential uses in a couple of areas. One is the, the, vet, the, the prime one is the Veterinary Center. There, there's at least one more that I'm aware of that are, are non-residential uses that are permitted through zoning board review on Route 77. And what the proposal is, is that on these lots, if they have frontage on an arterial, there's only one arterial in Cape Elizabeth, they shall be allowed not more than one freestanding or wall sign of the same size as, as is permitted for business uses in the town center district. It only applies to the town center district and the town, the town center district signs uh, are actually, uh, I'm not sure if I have it right here, they're, they're actually smaller than what a lot of the signs you see now because a lot of the signs you see in the town center area are grandfathered. What be typical of what would be allowed is what you see in front of the community center uh, or you see in front of the doctor's office uh, over in back here. Those are the type signs and the proximate sizes that are now allowed. They're not the big IGA sign that you once had. Yeah. Okay. Any further conversation around that? Any clarification? Thank you, Michael, for that. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next item on our agenda um, is um, we actually voted to actually bring that to, to a hearing, did we not? We did. Okay. Even though we opened it up for discussion. Okay, the next item is number 23, proposed short-term rental permit fee. Um, do I have a motion to uh, set a permit fee for our short-term rentals? A motion? Yes. Excuse me, Jim. Yeah. Did we do item 22? Yeah. I guess I missed. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's okay. All right, so, okay, number 22, sorry. Miscellaneous Offenses Ordinance Amendment. Um, do I hear a motion to um, on the miscellaneous offense ordinance? Yes, Kate, Kathy. I move that we um, we um, have the town council set a public hearing for Monday, January seventh, at seven p.m. Mm -hmm. um, to hear about the miscellaneous offenses ordinance amendments. I hear a second, Frank. Second. Any discussion? Right here. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next item, 23, we'll take it up again. Proposed short-term rental permit fee. It has been recommended that we have a $50 per unit rented uh, fee. I hear a motion to accept the proposed short-term rental permit fee. Jessica? Motion. I move that we accept the proposed short-term rental rentals permit fee, $50 per unit rented. Seconded. Second. Second with Frank. Any discussion? Michael, any background as to why fifty dollars? It wasn't twenty five, it wasn't a hundred, there was <laughs> there was no magic to it at all. Kate. Just if we're truly gonna look at this as a one year <clears throat> trial permit, then I mean I don't understand why we should be charging fifty dollars per unit. I mean we're already limiting the ability for these people who are using this as an income source and now we're, we're using it as an income source. So I just think if it's truly a trial mm -hmm. ordinance, then perhaps we think about waiving the fee for the first year and seeing how it goes. 
Anybody, Frank? I guess uh, one question would be, do we have any insight into what our incremental cost may be to administer this mm -hmm. this year? Oh, you know, we, we don't know the exact cost. There's the permitting requirement. There's going to be time for the code enforcement officer to have to go out and, and inspect some of these properties. Uh, you know, we don't know the exact amount. The, the, the $50 is intended to reflect the discussion that's occurred over the last year, that this is not really being looked at as a fundraiser for the town. Uh, it's, it's merely, you know, a somewhat of a recognition of what the cost might be to administer it. But, you know, $50 for, you know, some of these places will have income of 20, 40, 20 to 40,000 a year. Uh, you know, some of them may have income of a couple thousand a year, but, uh, you know, $50, in my view, does not seem unreasonable. Any further discussion? Anyone else wants to weigh in? I think, it's, I think it's in line with other permitting costs in town. Mm -hmm. Kathy, any points on that? that? No? Okay. And Jessica? No, I think from, from some of the permits I've seen, I think it's well in line. Mm -hmm. I should say the permit fees that I've seen. It's, I think it's reasonable. Okay, well, um, if there is no other discussion, then uh, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of setting the permit fee at $50? We have five in favor. Opposed? One. Okay, okay moving on to the building permit notification number 24. Um, order that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council hereby request the Ordinance Committee to review notification issues upon the issuance of building permits. Do I have a motion to... Um, to move this to the ordinance committee, Jamie. Yeah, I move that we uh, send this to the ordinance committee. The uh, question of issuance of building permits. Seconded. A second. Okay. Any discussion, Michael? Did you want to add any conversation around this? This came up uh, in our um, our goal setting session, if you if you remember, and the thought was to move this right away to our ordinance committee. So that's really trying to, from an expedient standpoint, to get it, get it in the Ordinance Committee's hands quickly. Okay, I'll take a vote. All those in favor of moving the building permit notification to the Ordinance Committee? We have a 6-0 unanimous. Number 25, we have Property Tax Relief Program. Order the Cape Elizabeth Town Council hereby request the Ordinance Committee to review the programs relating to property tax relief. Do I have a motion? Frank? I move that we send to the Ordinance Committee, committee the um, <coughs> question of property tax relief program as presented <coughs> in our agenda. Okay, seconded. Anyone? Jessica? Again, uh, any discussion around this? If you remember, this was to a uh, conversation at our goal setting session, which the decision was to move it to ordinance. Okay, all those in favor? All those opposed? 6 0. Item number 26, the Appointments Committee report. I'll turn this over to the chair of the Appointments Committee, Jessica Sullivan. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ch uh, Jim. <laughs> Just say Chairman Jim. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, well, uh, as always, ha happy difficulty uh, on behalf of the entire Appointments Committee making our appointments because we are so lucky in Cape Elizabeth to have such, such uh, um, interesting, qualified, and dedicated <coughs> citizens who want to serve the town. So I'll go ahead with the council's indulgence and read the list. I would also like to read, uh, to designate new appointment and reappointment. I think it's very nice to hear of our citizens who have served and want very much to serve again. So for the Board of Assessment Review, a new, our new appointment is John McAniff. For the Conservation Commission, we are reappointing Marty Blair and Mitch Waxman. For the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, our new appointment is Greg Frame, and our reappointment is Aaron Grady. For the Personnel Appeals Board, our new appointment, I'm sorry, our reappointment is Don Harmon. For the Planning Board, we are reappointing Liza Quinn, Victoria Volant, and Carol Ann Jordan. For the Recycling Committee, we are reappointing Jamie Garvin, Jessica D. Simpson. For the Riverside Cemetery Trustees, we are reappointing Jesse Timberlake. For the Thomas Memorial Library Trustees, we are reappointing Judith McManamy and Lee Ruddy. 
For the Zoning Board of Appeals, we are reappointing Barry D. Hoffman, and we have a new appointment of Matthew Caton. And I'd also like to read <clears throat> that we want to express a thank you to Christopher C. Lynch, who has served the maximum number of terms on the Board of Assessment Review, and also to Dan Chase, who has served the maximum number of years on the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and also to David Johnson, who did not seek reappointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, but served with distinction there. Um, shall I go on and read the rest? Go, go right ahead. Fine. Right in. We have a short meeting. We also want to thank Wyman Briggs, Brian Dennison, Frank Governale, Ted Hawks, Peter Ingraham, Alan Lishness, David Witten, Mary K. Williams Hewitt, and Chairman Bill Slack for their service as members of the Alternative Energy Committee. The committee was appointed on October 10, 2007, and is completing their work effective December 31, 2012. Thank you to Ernie McVean and Greg Marles for staffing the committee. And the, the last, shall I? Go right ahead. Okay. Thank you to Richard Bauman, Carol Ann Jordan, Caitlin Jordan, myself, Frank Governale, Wayne A. Brooking Jr., Craig Cooper, Bo Norris, Chris Franklin, and Chairman John Green for their service as members of the future Open Space Preservation Committee. This committee was appointed in early 2011 and has com actually has completed its work effective December 31, 2012. And thank you to Maureen O'Meara for staffing that committee. And your motion is to? My motion is to accept the appointees. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? I guess I'd like to just reaffirm a thank you to all of these citizens who are willing to step up and help us with the activities of running our town. And also for those individuals who chose not to be reappointed, we thank them for their service. And the committees that you mentioned, the hard work and the efforts are, again, uh, it's all about making uh, Cape Elizabeth a great place to live. So I hear no discussion, then we'll move to a vote. All those who accept the appointments, right. committee's recommendation? I just want to add one thing. Right. The, the applicants we had this year were just outstanding, and they are always good. Uh, we had a lot of people, surprisingly, for the positions that were available, and they are, uh, not only were they qualified, clearly, but I'm, I hope they will seek other opportunities to work yeah. in the town in various uh, voluntary capacities, because they can add a lot of value to our, to our town. Yeah. I think that was how you initially started your recommendation, that it's a good decision, but also it has, you know, there aren't enough opportunities in some ways. Well, we wish we could place everybody all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a great problem to have, actually, because there's a lot of talent here in the community. Yep. And uh, it's, it, it really, it's in our best interest to try to find a place to put some of that to work for the good of the community. Yes, Jamie. So I, um, I see two of the new appointments, you know, I'm, Friendly with a couple of these guys, uh, Greg Frame is a great addition to the Port Williams Advisory Commission, mm -hmm. and uh, Matt Caton, who's just new to this town <coughs> in February. Um, funny enough, mm -hmm. was a lawyer at the same firm that I was in in Washington D.C., but he served in the London office, mm -hmm. so I can vouch for his bona fides. <laughs> great. Well, that's. I mean, that's that's aw that's awesome, really. I mean, those. Type, I mean, you know, Dan Chase has served. The Fort Williams has just been an incredible case study in success, and, and Dan was chair at one time. I mean, he has helped, you know, and, and is incredibly, um, uh, it brings the historical part of the work they do and constantly reminding people about what the mission is and what we're, I mean, it's just, it's all, it's all good stuff. So, so I, if anyone, any other comments anyone wishes to make um, to, and I'll move the question and all those in favor of the appointments recommendation unanimous. Okay, there's one item that is not on the agenda here before we move to the last item, and that is the, um, the draft. Um, He's not to vote on, though. <clears throat> not to vote on. This is just a conversation. Um, I don't know whether there's any. Um, need one to come back this way. An extra back here. Just a piece. Thanks. There we go. Thanks. So. One, one <clears throat> so. Oh. Michael, did you want to? Yeah, I, so I just wanted so so hopefully these will be ready to be approved at next month's meeting. Came up with the, the draft. I emailed the council a few days ago based on your workshop. What I, what I tried to do is to get the essence of what you said. And sometimes you you might not see something specific that you said, but it's incorporated. And for example, there were a couple of specific points about the town center that instead uh, 
or incorporated in this suggestion that a committee be, be formed to develop a new town center plan. Uh, but anyway, I, I just wanted to make sure that what I had drafted here is the essence of what you wanted. And if you had any changes that you wanted to see, if you'd let me know, uh, or anything you think I missed. Okay. Any, uh, any redirect on that is that uh, FYI? So we just send them directly to you, Michael? Yes, yeah, send it to me. And, and you know the plan would be to have this on your agenda on January 7th for adoption. OK. Um, uh, the process is our, every, everyone here is in, in tune with the process on this one. I, I, you know, I, I think we've, we've had a, a couple, three years together doing it this way, and it seems to work out pretty well. Uh, um, Jamie, you're new to this, um, but I think, uh, Again, it's, it's time to weigh in between now and the 7th. Um, I don't know whether we've had citizen input at that meeting and had it made any change or modification, but uh, we certainly had some citizen input the other night at our workshop, especially about the tax benefits issue. Um, so again, a hearing note redirect from Michael, then we'll just plan on yeah. having people give him information on adjustments or yeah, and, modifications. And, and just you know, to show, even before you adopt this, some of the things going on, the, the library one, the first one, it's develop a process and a plan to determine the future library services. You'll be having a discussion. You're currently scheduled to have a discussion on that at your workshop on January 10th. OK. Uh, on the next one, the town center plan, your January 7th agenda, we'll have a proposed charge to a new committee. Uh, I've asked for that to be drafted. And you can either table it or re you can either approve it or send it to workshop. Mm -hmm. The stewardship plan is the subject of a workshop you have with the Cape Elizabeth School Board on January 2nd. Uh, we're already obtaining an engineer's estimate for the connecting the shore, the shore road pathways between the Ford entrances. There's also a piece we're looking at between Surf Road and Cottage Road across from the old post office where there's no sidewalk mm -hmm. to look at that as well, which you didn't specifically mention, but it's the one piece that's missing in, in all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. At the bottom of the, the, the page, you, you already got started on building permit notifications. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to schedule the workshop for board chairs. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the one about reviewing the council chamber and conference room space, that will also be discussed on January 10th, uh, how you wish to proceed on that. The future Open Space Preservation Committee report will be on your agenda also on January 10th. So there's uh, quite a bit going on already. The property tax relief program, you just referred to the ordinance committee. You already had one meeting with local <coughs> legislators, or some of you were able to attend. So we're making progress. Good. Okay. All right, moving to the last item on our agenda, which is another second opportunity for citizens to discuss items that were not on our agenda. And not seeing anyone present in the room other than us, I guess we can move to entertaining a um, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Seconded. I second. All those in favor. Thank you.